It was late evening, when the city was full of night lights, and Morioka Morio was returning from her work with a bouquet of flowers. As soon as she got back to her room, she turned on the lights, took a quick glance around her room, and then surprisingly she threw away the bouquet of flowers that she had received from her work into the bin. She untied her hair, took off her coat, and fell right into her bed. She looked really exhausted from everything that had been going on in her life. Actually she was a 30-year-old woman who had quit her job, and so the bouquet of flowers was given to her on her farewell. She was so exhausted from all the work, that she finally collapsed on her bed right away. The next time she woke up, the sun was already up, and she was cuddled up with her pillow by her side. The alarm woke her up at 7 am, when she realized that she didn't have to show up for work anymore, since she had quit her job yesterday. She was relieved and later on during the day, she was chilling and cleaning around her house, when she remembered that she was now free and could play games as long as she wanted to. Soon she went on to her laptop, where she caught the attention of a game that was near her. This game was one of her most favorite games, but unfortunately the service for this game was terminated as she was not playing this game at all for the last six months. She was a bit disappointed but understood why her game was terminated. She was sad for a bit when she remembered her online friend that she made then decided to download some other MMO games. She finally found one which seemed really interesting to her, as she liked the art and the characters of the game. She was actually a 30-year-old woman, who had quit her corporate job to become a neat. She was not her average neat, but considered herself to be an elite one. But when she started to play this game, she decided to log in as a guy character. She made her character really hot, and finally logged in. After that, she received a letter from a bird, that her quest had already started, and she was fired up. But unfortunately, as she went ahead to defeat the boss, she couldn't do it at all, and even after numerous tries, she ultimately failed. She was feeling pretty depressed when a fellow player asked her if she was okay. This player had a really cute getup, and she was impressed with this new player, who named herself as Lily. Hayashi, who was Morioka's character, was happy to see her, and then she was also surprised when Lily asked her to be her partner in this game, as this game has really pretty scenery, and she would help him since he was a beginner. Morioka was so happy to get help from this kind stranger. She even helped Hayashi to win a lot of fights. And when he finally leveled up, she asked to face the final boss. After a bit of struggle and help from Lily, she defeated the boss. The both of them were really happy. And Morioka felt so happy after playing the game with Lily. Later they were at the ocean where Hayashi showed Lily some sea anemones. And were having fun with the sea animals. That was when the game reminded them that Christmas was almost at the door. Seeing this Hayashi had an idea. The next day when they met, Lily invited him for a hunt, but he turned her down surprisingly. This happened the next day too. When the whole guild was out drinking later, they were discussing how much of a progress Hayashi has made in this game. And he too agreed that this would not have been possible without their help. On the other hand, Lily was sitting isolated from the group which was noticed by one of the members. The player went to her and asked her why she was acting so strange when she confessed that Hayashi was acting really strange with her. This matter was brought up by him to the guild master, where he said that they should help Lily and Hayashi since they were a part of the guild and their friends as well. Later Cam, the guild master took Hayashi out on a solo adventure where he asked him why he was avoiding Lily. He mentioned that although there was no romance policy in their guild, they could definitely be friends with each other. Hayashi confessed that actually, since Lily had been so nice to him, he wanted to acquire the crystal rose to give it to her for Christmas. This sounded really corny to Cam, but Hayashi had decided that he wanted to do it all by himself. Suddenly, they were attacked by a mammoth, and this monster started to attack them with a snowy storm attack. On the other hand, Lily was sitting sadly on a branch of the tree, which was her favorite spot and enjoying the snow, when suddenly, Hayashi greeted her with a smile. She was really surprised to see Hayashi after such a long time. Hayashi climbed up the tree, and informed her that he was out on a tough quest. Seeing his condition, she was truly concerned about his injuries and quickly healed him. Then Lily asked whether she was being in his way. Hearing this, Morioka was really confused and didn't know how girls thought, although she was a girl herself. Not knowing what to say and how to comfort her, she thought of directly asking her if she was free on Christmas Eve. She was happy, and told her that she would be home as soon as she could from work. On the other hand, it is revealed that it is a guy who was actually Lily. This guy was asked out for drinks by his coworker, but declined since he had to get home and play the MMO. On the other hand, Morioka had no supplies left, so she had to go to the grocery store to get her ration. As she went there, she was annoyed that all the couples who were being lovey-dovey with each other, she was feeling out of place, and tried to get out of there as she was single this Christmas. She was so hungry that her stomach couldn't stop growling. As soon as she was approaching her turn to be checked out, she couldn't resist her hunger anymore, and gave in to her hunger. 
But coincidentally, Sakurai was present there as well, and he wanted the same chicken too, but upon hearing her stomach growling, he asked her to go ahead and have it. Later when they logged in, Lily gifted her an expensive perfume, which made her happy. Then he gave her the mini rose brooch, as he wasn't able to acquire the crystal rose. She loved the gift that was given to her by Hayashi. She appreciated the gift a lot, since he had worked hard to acquire it. The next day, Hayashi was out playing the game with another player of their guild. They were defeating a monster, where Hayashi and his partner were fighting hard to defeat the monster. After a while, they had finally defeated the monster. This monster was defeated finally, and they were taking a stroll around the cave they were in. That was when the girl told him about how the other guild members were out at their jobs and came home in the evening, so that was the only time they could play. She told him that she was glad to see him. Hearing this conversation, Morioka wasn't happy at all, since she was really worried about how she would tease him for being a neat and was also worried that he would be made fun of. Since she didn't know Morioka's situation, she also didn't know that Morioka was actually an elite neat. But thankfully, to her surprise, she asked him if he was a university student. This took her aback, but she was glad that she hadn't guessed the reality. Then she started to guess his age, which made him really nervous, but finally she made a wrong assumption and thought that he was 21, which was the same age as her. She was really young, compared to Morioka. She almost thought of telling her the truth, but the truth wouldn't come out of her as well. They talked about how job hunting was going to be hard for them. Her friend was really happy and excited, but she couldn't correct her misunderstanding. She was feeling really sorry for the misunderstanding she had created about her own image to her online friends. After a while, when the sun set and everyone came online, he and Lily were taking a stroll down the beach when she told her that she knew that he was actually a university student. Later when the whole guild was out drinking, everyone got to know that he was a university student and a lot of them were surprised. Throughout this whole conversation, Hayashi was sitting really awkwardly. Kan was so pissed since he had bet on him being in his late 20s. This surprised Hayashi, since he didn't know that they were so invested to know about his private life. He was surprised to know but Lily actually had thought that he was older than her. This made him really insecure, and also really awkward about the whole situation knowing that he was deceiving his online friends. But it was too late now for him to back out of the rumor. On the other hand, she was glad that they could dodge the awkward questions about age finally. And since these friends were just online friends, she figured it would be okay if she wasn't completely honest with them. She awkwardly asked her age and immediately regretted it. Lily was silent for a while, then she told him that telling him her age would be too personal for her. Hearing this made Hayashi emotional and he started to cry. Lily asked him to not cry anymore, and then she told that she was sorry for being interested in his personal life. He told her that even he wasn't comfortable talking about a few things, so it would be better if the both of them told each other about their personal lives when they are closer. Later she told him that Cam was a good person and to not misunderstand him or his intentions. A while back, their guild almost disbanded due to the previous guildmaster getting an overseas assignment, but Cam stepped up to be the guildmaster. Suddenly Morioka looked at the time, and it was 5 am in the morning already. Lily was really tense since she had work in the morning, so they decided to stay up. Eventually, Morioka fell asleep on her desktop and when she woke up, she was suffering from a severe cold. She had to now walk to the pharmacy to get some medicine. As she was walking, Sakurai was running to his work, and unfortunately they bumped into each other which knocked out Morioka. Morioka started to have an absurd dream where all the office goers were acting like robots, and she tried to escape this cycle. After this, she woke up. On waking up, she saw Sakurai sitting right by her. She thought that he was really pretty with his blonde hair. Soon he told her that she was knocked down by him around the corner, and was sorry for that, as this wasn't intentional at all. Sakurai was really clumsy but he offered to pay for her, since he was the one who had caused her trouble. He then realized that he had forgotten to bring his business card with him, so he wrote down his name and contact details on a paper where he told her to contact him anytime she wanted to. On the other hand, in the MMO, as he was standing alone near the river, his guildmates walked up to him asking about what was wrong since he looked pretty sad. Although he hesitated, they assured him that it was fine for him to tell them what was wrong with him. Hearing this, he was overwhelmed and thanked them. After he was done telling them his story by flipping the genders, they started to treat the story like some romance manga plot, which was so funny. They started giving him over-the-top ideas, but Camp asked him to just email the girls who had bumped into her. She agreed that it was a good idea, and started to write down her email. She was feeling nervous, but as soon as she sent the email, Sakurai received it and read it as well. He was out drinking with his colleague Koiwai. He replied to her right away. As her online friends were waiting for her, they were excited about Hayashi working hard for the email. When he returned, they were thrilled to know that the girl had asked him out for dinner. 
Morioka on the other hand, wasn't sure at all, since she felt like Sakurai was too cool for her. And it was a lot of effort for her to go out with a man, since going out to the convenience store took a huge toll on her. She took a look at herself in the mirror, and was terrified of her own appearance since she put almost no effort into looking good. The whole situation was horrible. On the other hand, in the game Lily greeted Hayashi, as he was sitting alone on the same branch of tree. Actually this was her safe spot, when she wanted to sit alone without bothering anyone, since she didn't want to be a burden to anyone. After a small talk, the both of them decided they could vent to each other and promised each other to be more free around each other. After she was done, Morioka thought that she must reply Sakurai, and send an email to him, but when she looked at the time, it was 2am in the middle of the night, which was not the best time for her to have sent the email to Sakurai who was already asleep. The next morning, the sun had already begun to rise, and light was entering Sakurai's room. Soon, his alarm had woken him up, and when he got hold of his phone, he was so shocked to see that Morioka had replied to him once again. After that, he went out to eat with his colleague Koiwai, who was a jolly person and liked to joke around and have a good time with everyone around him. Sakurai asked him to not eat the meat yet, since it wasn't even cooked. Hearing this, Koiwai laughed out and thought that he was in a blood type as he was so picky about the food being properly cooked. He told him that Koiwai himself was an O blood type. Hearing all this, Sakurai couldn't make any sense of it. Then he asked him a question about his old company. Koiwai was surprised that he knew about the company he used to work at, but was glad since Sakurai was the soon-to-be department head. Then he asked him about Morioka Moriko. Surprisingly, Morioka used to work in the office where Koiwai used to work. He was surprised when he heard her name but quickly recognized her by seeing the manual that Morioka had written. He referred to her as Morimori which was absurd as well, because it was too cute for a grown adult to be calling another grown adult. Sakurai asked him about her, and why she left the company despite her being really good at her job. Then he also asked him why he would refer to her as Morimori, and if he was very close with her. Actually, they weren't even friends, but she used to work on behalf of a colleague at night shifts when Koiwai would sometimes call her to ask for work. She would do all the work instead of the other colleague. She was pretty tired all the time from work, and on that day she especially sounded worn out. This was noticed by Koiwai, and hearing this she started to cry a lot which worried him, but he asked her to go ahead and cry her heart out as she was alone in her room. After that, he asked him her full name, and hearing Morioka Moriko, he came up with the name Morimori. Then, he proceeded to show Sakurai a picture of Morioka, where she looked absolutely stunning. Seeing the photo, Sakurai was sure that this Morioka was the same one he had bumped into, and their break time was already over and they were headed back to their office when Koiwai stopped in for some coffee and Sakurai headed back to the office. As he was heading back, he kept on thinking about the reply that he received from Morioka, who had turned him down. He was disappointed, but on the other hand, Morioka had never expected that she would ever get an email from a man, that too asking her out on a dinner. She felt happy, but overwhelmed at the same time while making her way towards the convenience store. As she reached there, the cashier in the store seemed to notice her and blush a little bit while she was out shopping for grocery. She was in a very good mood today, as she couldn't wait to go home and start playing her game. She was so happy and fired to be finally playing this game. As he logged in, he was greeted by a member of his guild, who asked Hayashi about his problems in real life. Hayashi was surprised that he knew about the problems that he was facing in real life. The player also told him that he got to know this form Lilac, and news spreads fast around here. After a while of chatting, Heihei suddenly received a gift from a player. Upon getting this gift, he was a bit excited to open it, and this gift was actually from Lily. She had sent him a really expensive gift. This was totally unexpected, and he didn't know how to react to this as he was not used to getting such expensive gifts. He didn't know how to accept the gift. He also was pretty embarrassed since generally, guys were the ones who were giving gifts to the ladies, but here the case was reversed. The expensive gift meant that probably, Lily had a lot of money and giving her another expensive gift would be of no use since probably she would have the one already. The other guy told him that it was normal for players to give each other gifts. Since when he began playing, their teammate Nico gave him a lot of expensive gifts as well. He wasn't sure how to receive these gifts, but Nico made him feel very comfortable about it. After that, he also told him that probably Lily wanted to cheer him up, and they could thank each other in their own ways. Then Pocatero told him that maybe Lily had some ulterior motives with him, which was surprising to him. Morioko couldn't believe that Lily could have ulterior motives with her. She got off her desktop, grabbed a drink and started to clean her room, but she couldn't stop thinking about it, so she thought of confronting Lily. When she met her, Hayashi thanked her for the gift. He was actually really happy with the gift that he had received from her. But then he just asked her if she had any ulterior motives as he could not ever afford to gift her such an expensive gift. 
Hearing this, she was taken aback but then she told him that she indeed had some ulterior motives. Actually, when she had started to play this game, she had been teaming up with a lot of random people and players, and once she had joined a guild, a member had suspected her of getting close to the guild master. This event was too hard on her, but she decided not to quit. Actually she had met another player in another game with whom she was really close, who gave her the courage to go on. Later on, she was also supported by Cam, who advised her to act obnoxious, but this idea wasn't good for her. Then, Cam suggested that they could act as a couple so that other people wouldn't approach her. But then, as she met Hayashi, her outlook on people changed and she actually enjoyed playing the game with him. She was so happy, and that is why she decided to gift him the suit as a token of gratitude. Out of nowhere, she asked him to be his partner, which was so surprising that Morioka couldn't even control her excitement. Morioka was overjoyed. On the other hand, her guild members were watching their interaction and were happy for the both of them. Hayashi was so happy to be Lily's partner. The next day, Morioka was scrolling through the home page and was thinking about buying some stuff with the online gaming money. But buying stuff would mean that she would be cutting out her savings. But then she also thought that life was pretty good as of now, so she wished to buy some things and kept thinking about Lily throughout the whole thing. On the other hand, in the grocery store, Fujiyoto, the cashier was on duty when his manager told him that Furuya would be covering for him when he was out to give a job interview and asked him to cover an extra shift for her. After that, she also told him that the maintenance work was going on for the electronic money, but that wouldn't be a problem since there was only one customer who used it. As soon as she spoke, Morioka arrived, and she was the only customer who was using the electronic money services for her gaming. After she was done shopping, she came in to get her bill, but she was informed by the cashier that the service was terminated for a while, but that it should be resumed within 5 minutes and asked her if it was okay that she waited for 5 minutes nearby. All of a sudden, he brought up the topic that even he played Fruits de Mer, and there was a campaign going on right now. Hearing this, she was really puzzled but she looked quite invested hearing that a person from her real life was playing this game. As they were talking, she listened to him with full focus, but as soon as she began to speak up, another customer interrupted them by wanting cigarettes from him. As she was about to leave, the cashier stopped her and asked her to visit again. On her way back home, she looked pretty happy about having talked to someone about MMOs in real life. When she reached home, she logged in to play her game, where she was taking with Cam about the loot that she had planned already to buy with her web money from the official site. Their conversations were being heard by Lilac, who was standing at a distance from them. She was spotted by Hayashi, and then Lilac slowly revealed her new outfit, which was a very cute tunic. Hayashi was so impressed by this. She also had a bunch of butterflies flying around her, which was the brand new butterfly magic effect. In order to purchase this, she had to spend a large sum of money on it. But Cam didn't seem to be impressed by her outfit. But Hayashi tried to tell her that Cam surely thought her outfit to be cute, but just couldn't express it. Lilac was really mad at Cam as he couldn't even compliment her properly the way Hayashi did. Soon Pocatero also joined in on their chat and complimented her looks. She was really flattered by it, but asked him to step aside since no one was able to see her outfit because of her. Later she informed them that she had actually got these two items at 10,000 yen only. She was quite lucky to get these items. Then Hayashi told them about his plan of buying the rarest items on the loot, which was honestly a trap for the greedy players. But all his friends cheered him up at last. When Lily came online, she also wished to accompany Hayashi so that he would be able to get a suitable loot. When Hayashi was finally ready to start playing, Morioka drew out her web money card. But unfortunately nothing was left on the home page anymore other than some old potions, which was already available. She looked so disappointed that she couldn't enjoy her loot the way she had planned to. After a while everyone had received some prizes and Hayashi had gotten a bracelet. Lilac understood why Lily and Cam liked Hayashi so much. His personality was so cheerful and bubbly to be around. After a while, he actually got the top two pieces. He decided to sell one for great money and keep the other one as an heirloom. Lily also acquired a fairy outfit which was really cute. After that Cam told her that her old outfit suited her way better since the new one wasn't like her at all. The next day, she was back to wearing her old outfit and the whole guild was out on a quest. Pakatero was upset at Cam, since he thought that she wasn't wearing the new outfit that she had played so hard to get because of him bullying her. He told her that it wasn't his intention to bully her into not wearing it, but he also thought that since Lilac was close to him, he didn't think twice before speaking to her and says what comes on his mind first. Then Hayashi too asked her about the outfit, when she said that she thought that her old outfit suited her more. She actually didn't mind the things Cam said to her, but actually liked the fact that he was so open with her. She wanted to wear it for him, as she had feelings for Cam. The next day at work, Koiwai told Sakurai how he had been spacing out at work recently. He figured it was mainly since he had developed feelings for Morioka, but he denied. 
Then Koiwai pointed out all the things that he was doing these days. He was so spaced out all the time, kept checking his phone every time and also was visiting the convenience store pretty often as well, hoping that he would run into her once again. All these behavior only meant that he liked her. Hearing all this, Sakurai felt like a stalker and then he thought that he would have to think of some other excuse to email her. Koiwai understood exactly how he was feeling. While returning from work, he went to the convenience store and was hoping to run into his old colleague. After a while of wandering around, he finally came across her. He thought that she was still very cute. He decided to come back and have a conversation with her. She was quite flustered as she wanted to avoid talking to him at all costs. But soon he began initiating a conversation with her, and the cashier thought that he was hitting on her. He started asking her about what dinner he should buy, since the packaged meals are dope nowadays. All of a sudden, he asked her out on a dinner date. He assured her that it would be fine, and that it would be his treat. Of course she was perplexed at first, but agreed to it. The next day, Koiwai came to Sakurai to show him the details of Morioka's phone number that he had in his phone. At first Sakurai thought that he had stolen the details from his phone, but actually that was not the case, as Morioka had given the details to him herself. Hearing about their date, Sakurai was really sad, so later on in the game he was sitting alone near the river, fishing. Now she was interrupted by Hayashi who had come to talk to her about something. He started to tell her about all the strange incidents that have been going on in her life, and even about Sakurai. Hearing this story from Hayashi, Sakurai was really confused since the incidents had a strange coincidence to the events of his own life. Sakurai finally realized that this person Hayashi was actually Morioka. Sakurai began to picture all the things that he was discussing with Lily. Upon realizing that these incidents were just too detailed and specific to just be a coincidence, he was really confused. He didn't know what to do and how to answer. On the other hand, Morioka, Hayashi was still waiting for his reply. Moriox was wondering why Lily wasn't replying when suddenly Sakurai snapped out of it and made an excuse that he had actually spilled coffee on his keyboard and had to clear it up. Morioka asked if he was okay. She was relieved to hear that the keyboard was also fine, since without her, things would have been really lonely for Morioka in the game. The next day at the office, Koiwai was teasing Sakurai about his date with Morioka. Sakurai was so jealous and insecure when he heard about his date with Morioka that he actually thought that it was mainly because she had been forced by him to go out. Then Koiwai suggested that he should join them too. That way he could have a conversation with Morioka face to face. But Sakurai was still depressed about the fact that he had been rejected while she was going out on a date with Koiwai. He was pretty sad about it, and thought that if he went he would be disturbing them on their date. Meanwhile, Morioka was out shopping in the convenience store. She was out looking for some stockings as she had thrown out all her stockings, and she couldn't possibly be seen looking like a wreck in front of Koiwai. She decided to put some effort into her looks and into making herself look more presentable. As she was walking through the makeup corner, she thought of her foundation, eyeshadow and her mascara, and started to panic when she realized that she had nothing to wear to her date with Koiwai. She had no time to relax and hurried to the cash counter to get her stuff filled. Soon, the cashier introduced himself to her saying that they couldn't get a chance to talk the other day since they were interrupted by the man. He also told her about the server he was in and asked if they could play together sometimes or go on a quest, she quickly agreed. When she told him that she played on the commerce server, he was excited since he played on the same server too. But as soon as he told his name, her face turned pale. As she entered the game, she was hiding under the bushes when she met Lilac. She was pretty excited as she was about to go hunting with her real-life friend. She met this girl in her university, and this girl actually posed as a guy online. Morioka obviously found this relatable and asked her if she was creeped out by the fact that her friend was a guy online. Hearing this Lilac thought that she was making fun of her friend, but that was not the case actually. Soon Cam arrived and told them that they should have these conversations under wraps. Morioka felt obviously uncomfortable near him. He asked Lilac what he thought of people who posed as the other gender, and surprisingly she was totally okay with it. After she left, things got really awkward between Cam and Hayashi. Actually, Fujioka was none other than Cam. After that, he apologized to Cam for lying about his gender and everything else. Cam actually understood it, since he thought that Hayashi was oddly mature for his age. He also thought that she was too kind to have lied to hurt someone, so he thought it was okay for her to pose as a male player online, since it wasn't hurting anyone. Hearing this made her really emotional. Cam and Hayashi agreed that it would be better if they kept this as their secret, since explaining it to everyone would be really difficult. Cam also warned her to not talk too much about her own life. But after playing the game, as she took a look into the mirror, she was frightened by how unattractive she looked, so she thought that it was probably fine if she asked Lily about the outfit that she could wear to her date. She remembered about Cam's warning, but thought it was okay since it was only a one-time thing. 
When she found Lily, she told her about the date that she was supposed to go on tomorrow. Sakurai thought that maybe this was a different person since Morioka and Koiwai had their date the day after tomorrow. Koiwai had actually gone on a business trip to Osaka and was supposed to return the day after tomorrow. Now as she asked about suggestions of what to wear, Lily answered him as if he was a man. She couldn't understand how to ask her about women's clothes. And that was when Cam stepped in and framed the question for her. She was really grateful for him, and she then suggested that she wear a cardigan with a skirt. When it came to the topic of styling hair, Kanb and Lily were arguing about short and long hair. The next day, Morioka went to the salon to get her hair styled up and wasn't sure what hair to go with. The stylist suggested she go with long hair, but since she was conflicted, she decided to keep her hair medium length. This was a smart decision since she looked very pretty with medium hair. Later she went out shopping for a new blouse, a cardigan and also a new skirt to wear for her date, and thus she concluded her real life shopping. On the other hand, Sakurai was still at his desktop. He kept thinking about Koiwai's date, thus called him to confirm about it. As expected, he was still in Osaka. On the other hand, Morioka was getting ready. She had put a lot of effort into looking pretty for the date. When Sakurai logged in, Hayashi wasn't online. This kept bugging him, so he quickly rushed off to see Morioka. His gut feeling told him that Morioka was Hayashi, but still gave himself the benefit of doubt. As he reached, his doubt was confirmed as Morioka was indeed waiting there. And since it had already been an hour, she was about to leave. Thankfully, she was spotted by Sakurai who was mesmerized by her beauty, and he called out to her and she was leaving the spot. As Morioka was leaving the spot feeling pretty depressed and disappointed, thinking that everything was probably lip service, she was stopped by Sakurai who called out to her from behind. Hearing him, she was quite surprised, as she didn't know him that much but was shocked to see him calling out to her out of the blue. When she saw him, she was confused as to why he was there. But then, she received a call from Koiwai. Sakurai already knew that it was Koiwai who was calling her, since he was Sakurai's senior at his office. This new information also shocked her, and it was too much to process, so he asked her to pick his call up. As soon as she picked, Koiwai told her that he was in Osaka, and had called to talk about their date tomorrow. She was embarrassed since she had mixed up their days, and had showed up today. Hearing this made him burst out in laughter, because he thought that she must be really interested in him to think of him so highly, and become so excited about it, while actually it was because she was in neat and had mixed up the weekdays. When he heard Sakurai's voice, he asked her to put the phone on speaker, and asked him if he thought Morioka looked cute right now. This embarrassed Morioka and made him blush. Morioka was so embarrassed that she covered her face with shame, but he assured her that she looked super cute and to have more self-confidence in herself. This was another unexpected move from him. She had never imagined that Sakurai would be complimenting her out of nowhere, but she seemed really happy. After that, Koiwai asked to speak to her privately, when he suggested that he should go out with Sakurai for the night since she had turned him down before as well. She ended the call and asked Sakurai if he was free for drinks right now. Of course he agreed, and they went out drinking. It was honestly refreshing for the both of them, and Sakurai thanked her for asking him out for dinner. Then she asked him how he knew that he had mixed up the days. He obviously couldn't tell her the truth, so he told her that he knew about their date since Koiwai had told him. But when he was returning from work, he spotted her and this figured that she might have mixed up the days. She also considered herself lucky that she got a chance to talk to Sakurai, and so did Sakurai. Sakurai felt everything was unreal as when they had met for the first time. They both didn't know that they had Koiwai as a mutual. He also told her that they had met before at the convenience store, but Morioka had completely forgotten about it. He then told her the whole incident that had happened the other day while they were in the convenience store, and how she took away the last piece of chicken. She apologized to him once again about all the inconvenience that she had caused him. As they were taking a taxi back home, he asked her if they could take a walk. She was happy when she heard the suggestion and went out for a walk. As they walked, they had a peaceful vibe going on. Samurai reminded her of Lily a lot, since they were basically the same person. She then told him how jealous she was of the situation. If she has seniors and employees like him and Koiwai, then she would have probably enjoyed her work in the office. She regretted not working in an office with people who were so wholesome. Then Sakurai discussed Koiwai's habit of teasing people around him, and also praised him a lot, but asked her to keep it a secret that he had praised Koiwai. After that when she started to talk about how much she was looking forward to her date tomorrow, Sakurai looked really disappointed and thought that it was time that he finally stepped back since he would only get in their way. After they bid each other farewell, Sakurai called Koiwai and let him know about his decision and he also thought that they would be a better match so he decided to not show up the other day. Meanwhile in the game, all the other guild members were wondering why Hayashi hadn't logged in yet as he was pretty consistent about logging in. They figured that maybe he had a lot to drink. 
and as he was still a university student, life was easy for him. Sakurai was still very upset with everything that was going around him, and the fact that today Morioka was going out with Koiwai. He was really sad about it, but nothing could be done now. Meanwhile, Morioka was waiting for her date to arrive, and suddenly Koiwai called her. Actually, he had rescheduled their date to an earlier time as he couldn't wait to meet her. He surprised her from behind, as he had already arrived at the location. As their date began, she noticed how he let her walk on the footpath side, which reminded her of Sakurai as he did the same thing for her the other day. When they finally arrived, all they kept talking about was Sakurai. Koiwai told her how he thought that Sakurai might be in love with her, and also thinks of her as a fine woman. They also talked about how her online friends had helped her choose her outfit. He complimented her a lot, which made her blush a lot. She was having a great time with him. He then excused himself to go talk to Sakurai. When he returned, he saw that she had already passed out from drinking. He took a photo and sent it to Sakurai telling him that she was in a vulnerable position and he could take advantage of her whenever he wanted to. Sakurai was actually playing the MMO. Hearing this, Sakurai was so tensed up that he left the MMO and ran to Koiwai's home. All the other guild members kept wondering if he was okay. Upon reaching, he discovered that he was only bluffing and that actually he had dropped her to her own home. Then he asked her how he had found her at the station, and that he knew that she would mix up, and also handed him a takoyaki. On the other hand, Morioka had also reached her home and collapsed on her bed when she remembered that she had to wash her makeup as she was still wearing some. While washing her face, she thought of how she had used up all her luck with men over the few days. She kept remembering how these men had gone over the top to compliment how pretty she was. After getting fresh, she finally sat down at her computer to play her game. This definitely felt like home to her as she started to play. She looked really happy since this was her ultimate comfort zone. As she logged in, she saw that Lily wasn't online, so she thought of meeting everyone else. But then suddenly, Lily appeared looking really cheerful and happy. She asked him about his date, and he was happy to let her know that he had a lot of fun while out drinking. As he was about to start playing, Sakurai kept wondering how the other day when he suddenly left the quest, Kan might have suspected something, and the thought of this was weighing him down. Also he wasn't ready to hear about what Hayashi had to say about him and Koiwai. The thought of him getting rejected once again was really embarrassing and depressing to him for some reason. He was quite confused as Lily was supposed to be a carefree character, yet here he was worrying about how he would face his online friends. Morioka seemed quite sad since Lily wasn't logging in, and as it was a Sunday, he was supposed to log in earlier since he didn't have work, and also it would make Morioka happy. He thought of how the first time he had heard Morioka talk about their incident, he thought it to be a pure coincidence and brushed it off. He actually liked to spend his time with Morioka a lot. Her innocence, her kind heart and everything about her made him seriously happy. He remembered how Hayashu began to devote himself to Lily and how happy it made him. This was pure luck that they were so related, and so close all along. He finally decided to log in, and as soon as he did so, he was greeted by everyone. As she came, she told everyone that she had bought a lot of outfits and avatars and would like to show it to everyone. Everyone was excited, but she blushed when Hayashi told him that he wanted to see all her outfits. She put on a bunny outfit, and Hayashi complimented this outfit. Hayashi was shocked by the fact that females could change their haircut whenever they felt like it. This was also applicable for male characters who had long hair. He regretted it, and now he thought that it would have been better if he had chosen longer hair, as then he would have had a lot more options. Sakurai then remembered how one time he had convinced Cam to put on a different hairstyle which was actually so funny that even thinking about it now makes him chuckle. As they were walking back to their secret place, Sakurai felt really nervous, and it felt like it was as if she was out with a client for the first time. The last time he felt this nervous was when he had to deal with his first ever client. Honestly, this was too much for him to deal with. After they had seated on the tree, she started to tell him about how he had enjoyed her time with him, and also thanked him for his advice the other day. She asked him why he wasn't logging in much, when he told her that he was actually stuck with some problems in real life. Finally, Hayashi started to talk about the time he had spent with the two men consecutively. Sakurai already knew what she was about to say. When she said that she had messed up, he already knew that she was talking about the time when she had mixed up the dates. He already knew that she ended up waiting all alone for over an hour. But then, she told him that she ended up meeting with Sakurai and it was a lovely coincidence. Meeting with Sakurai made her day. Hearing about this made him really flustered. But he continued to lend an ear to her and pretended that he didn't know anything about it. Hearing this, he almost wanted to confess to her that he knew everything and that he was actually Lily, but he controlled himself somehow. He was also really flustered that she only kept talking about Sakurai and nothing about Koiwai. But this made him happy somehow. But at the same time guilt overcame him since he was feeling really sorry for not being honest with Morioka as this was kind of deceiving to Morioka. 
The next day, Koiwai called Sakurai to tease him about being at work even on the weekends. But then he ended the call. He was planning on downloading an MMO for the first time and playing it. The best person to contact in this case was obviously Morioka, since she knew the most about MMO games since she was practically a neat nowadays. As she was preparing to play, she received an unexpected call from Koiwai. She was shocked to know that Koiwai had decided to play this game, but she now had to change her character as well if she wanted to play with Koiwai. As she was a guy online, explaining the situation would be too complicated for Koiwai, so she decided to make a new character to play with him. This character would be a female one of course. She bid her farewell to camp and decided to start developing her new character right away. As she was thinking about styling her new character, she wasn't sure exactly how to do it. She had a lot of different styles on her mind, like the cool or cute types, but finally she decided to go in with the look of the character that she had in the last game that she played which was a girl with long blue hair. After she had finished developing her character, she entered the server where Nico was talking about how she wanted to quit her job to become a neat. After that she received a text from Koiwai that he was already ready to play the game, and that he was playing as a tall blonde female character named Harumi. Harumi was in the town, and Molly was out searching for her. Soon she saw a girl who matched the description of what Koiwai had described her. As soon as she saw the character, she was so shocked as the character had the face of a beautiful lady, but was really tall and had a muscular build. Then Harumi got excited to see her and began to talk on the group server, where she told him to talk on their personal server. After that, Miko began to talk to them, but since Molly was playing under a different name, she figured that she was safe. Cam 2 started to have a conversation with them. Seeing his out-of-place character among all the other normal players, Koiwai couldn't control his laughter. Harumi was also a very Japanese name, which was unusual for players to be naming their characters. So he told Nico that the name was actually based on her brother. Later when Sakurai returned home from his office, he checked his phone where he had gotten a few messages from Koiwai. He got to know that Koiwai had started playing the MMO along with Morioka. This made him think whether they were getting really close with each other, and of course they were. But then he saw a photo of the character that Koiwai had sent him. This character resembled the character that he used to play with a long time ago and this character had suddenly disappeared from his line. Suddenly, Koiwai got a call from Sakurai and got excited to pick it up. Nico started to tease Harumi while she was gone. Fujioka wondered if Harumi was the guy he had met in the convenience store the other day, and sure it was him. After a while when he returned, he noticed a lot of baskets of food around him. On the other hand, Sakurai looked really tense sitting in front of the desktop. He kept wondering about how he had planned not to get involved with Morioka further, but planned on talking to Hayashi as Lily. Seeing Molly, he couldn't help but wonder if the resemblance the character had to the friend he had met in the other MMO was just coincidence or Morioka was actually Yuki. On the other hand, Harumu informed them that his friend would also be playing this game, and Morioka understood that he was talking about Sakurai. A lot had happened to Morioka since the time she had decided to quit her job and continue her focus on being an MMO player online. That is an elite need. From bumping into Sakurai, to going on a date with Koiwai, to messing up the dates of her dinner, to Sakurai realizing that he had been playing with Morioka since then as Hayashi and Lily. Now there was another twist that Morioka was actually Yuki and Sakurai was actually Hearth from another game that they had been playing for a while. Sakurai began having all sorts of flashbacks from the good times and good memories that he shared with her, and all the precious time that he had spent with her. That girl was really special to him, as she had brought him out of such a tough situation in his life. Actually, back then he had lost his parents. He was adopted and raised by elderly parents who were really rich. After his parents were dead, everyone started to gossip about how he was going to inherit a large sum of money from his parents. No one was there to support him, and since he was a bit different looking, he was also bullied in his school. The only people that he was actually close to were his parents, who had passed away unfortunately. He thought very highly of his parents since they had raised him to become a good responsible person in life. After his parents' death, as he inherited the money, he decided to sell the house and move into a smaller house. Since he couldn't manage the large house and also felt really lonely in such a large house. As he had shifted into a new house, he had started playing MMO since he had no real friends to talk to, or no real family to get connected to. This was the best way for him to maintain his sanity. That was when he met Yuki. Meeting Yuki changed his life for good. After he had met her, he felt like he had gotten a completely new outlook on his own life. He began to actually look forward to playing the game with her, and he loved how cheerful and polite she was. She also seemed like someone who actually enjoyed playing games. But after she confided in him, she was really fired up about her work, and that was the last time he had seen her. As these old memories rushed into him, he created a character that looked exactly like the one he was used to playing with in his last game, and named him the same name, but this time in English, so that it would be easier for her to figure it out. Finally, 
Harumi introduced Hearth to everyone in his guild, and judging by her reaction, it was quite clear that she had met Hearth for the first time. Later when they were out walking by, she wasn't sure how to pronounce his name, as it was in English. She asked him how he was so skilled in this game, when he confessed that he was actually quite fond of these games. Then she asked him the correct pronunciation of his name, when he told her that he used to play Nanter's G. After hearing the name, all the old memories began flooding through her memory. All her memories with Hearth and the other MMO and how she had to quit gaming due to her office. After a while, they all gathered in the guild where Harumi was already asleep, and she had missed her chance to ask him about whether he was Hearth in Nanter's G. When Hearth had finally logged out, Morioka decided to call Sakurai to ask him about Hearth. When she called him, he received her call instantly, and to her surprise, he indeed was Hearth. Hearing that, the both of them were really happy since Yuki had a great time with Hearth. Once they started to talk, the both of them started having butterflies. Hearing him speak, she tried to apologize to him as her personality online was different from her offline. Hearing her so happy, Sakurai began to think that he wasn't doing any justice to her, as she still wasn't aware of the fact that this guy whom she was talking to was actually Lily. As he told her, he noticed that his battery was dead, so probably she hadn't heard anything about it. The next day, he received an email from her saying that she would like to talk to him about MMOs once again, since the bond they shared online was a very special one for her. This confirmed that she had in fact not heard anything from him the other day over call. As he was headed back from work, he couldn't stop thinking about all that had happened over the past days. Coincidentally, he once again came across Morioka walking down the road. Upon seeing him, she was totally unprepared as she didn't have a nice outfit on or even didn't have her hair done properly. She was really hungry, so he offered her some sweets that he had bought. They proceeded to sit in a park, where they were having sweets, and it was so cold that he had to lend his jacket and muffler to her. The day reminded him of last Christmas when they met in the convenience store for the first time. After a while, she began to talk about how he reminded her of Lily, and how Lily was such a lovely woman that she loved spending a lot of time with her. She wished to introduce them to each other, so that they could play together as a team. She also told him that she plays as a guy character. After hearing this, he became really emotional and declined her offer for obvious reasons. Before she could say anything to him, he confessed that he was actually Lily and that was the reason why he couldn't play with her. She was totally shocked after hearing the truth from him. The weather was actually really gloomy and on the other hand Morioka found herself bathing in Sakurai's bathroom. Why was she there? Actually after Hayashi told her that she was Lily, it took some time for her to process the whole fact. She couldn't believe what he had just told her. She never could have expected him to be Lily. Hearing the shocking revelation, a lot of things started going through her head and she couldn't understand how to react anymore. She couldn't almost die out of embarrassment since she had confessed a lot of things to Lily, not knowing that Lily was Hayashi. So now, Sakurai is not just Lily, but also Hearth as well. Registering the fact that the three people were the same ones was really a hard one for her, and it was like her brain almost stopped working for a second. She was also really confused how he knew that she was Hayashi. Then he apologized to her for all the confusion and chaos. She also asked him since when did he know about the truth of her being Hayashi. He told him the truth that he had known everything since the day she had messed up her days. So, he rushed to see Morioka waiting at the station, where all his doubts and suspicions were cleared about her being Hayashi. Then, she thought how kind he must be that he mustered up the courage to run towards her, despite knowing that explaining their relationship would be really tough for him. He did it mainly for her, which was very precious and meaningful for her. She thought that if she was in his place, she could never tell the truth in fear of losing the person, their relationship and their friendship. Her respect for Hayashi only increased after this. After that Hayashi told her how happy he becomes whenever he is spending time with her online, and whenever they are going on quests together. Then he told her that he would quit the game for her sake, since she was not going to have a savory experience with him around. But he was totally wrong, as she didn't think of him that way at all. She thought of him differently. She started to apologize to him for posing as a guy online. Although she had told him a lot of things about her personal life, which made her embarrassed now, there was nothing she could do about it now, so she decided to apologize to him. He took started to apologize to her for being a guy but posing as a girl online. They both were now apologizing to each other which was a really funny scene to watch. After that, she told him that she would like it if they were still friends, as she loved playing games with him and spending time with him. She told him that since they were partners online, she wanted him to remain her online gaming friend. Hearing this, he looked really disappointed but tried his best to not show it to her and pretended to be okay with it. Actually there was a misunderstanding where he thought that she had completely friends on him, while she thought that she was trying to make things normal with him by initiating friendship with him. As he walked her home, he started to make his way back to his own place when she stopped him and asked him to go on more quests with her. This did make him happy, but he was actually sad for the most part. 
He loved being around her, but couldn't digest the fact that he was rejected by her so easily. The next few days when Hayashi was in the game, he couldn't find his partner Lily. Although she had fun playing the game without her and with the other members, she was missing him and the game was not the same without Lily. She looked really worried. On the other hand, Sakurai was out drinking every day with his co-worker Koiwa. He was so drunk that he almost passed off. This was unusual for him to do so, as he was the type of person to drink only till he could be sober. He was so sad that he almost passed out. Koiwa kept teasing him and clicking photos of him drunk, since this was a rare chance that he couldn't miss at all. Koiwa loved teasing him, but he was torn as to what he should do. Finally after he asked Sakurai what was wrong with him, he confessed that he got rejected by his love. Soon, Morioka received a text from Koiwai, which was totally unexpected. Koiwai had actually asked her to meet up at a nearby park all of a sudden. On the other hand, Koiwai had asked Sakurai to meet with him at the same location telling him that he had confessed to him being rejected which was something NHE wouldn't normally tell him, at the same time as well. Both of them agreed, and Morioka was already at the park waiting for Koiwai to arrive. Sakurai was a bit late, but was confused as to why he was called in by his senior suddenly. Upon arrival, he was shocked to see Morioka waiting for him at the location he was provided by Koiwai. She was equally shocked to see him too. It was clear that this was all set up by Koiwai. He wanted to set them up, and he was kind of successful in doing so till now. He had planned on doing this so that Sakurai wouldn't be sad anymore. This was his own way of cheering him up. He loved Sakurai, but didn't show it often. On the other hand, Koiwai was witnessing everything from afar. After Sakurai showed up, he decided to leave. They told each other that it was indeed Sakurai's plan to set them up. Now, the both of them were sitting awkwardly on the bench, not knowing what to say. Things were really awkward between them after that. Not just because he was Lily, but also because he hadn't logged in for a whole week after they had met. After that, as usual Morioka's stomach started growling and she was too hungry, so Sakurai suggested they go to pick up some food, as he hadn't eaten as well. She also laughed along and the both of them went into the convenience store. She wondered if Fujimoto knew about him, but he didn't know about him unfortunately. When they reached the store, the owner was shocked to see them together and welcomed Sakurai. She also tried to tease them by asking if she was his girlfriend. Hearing this made her nervous and she quickly ran off from the spot, and he quickly started to follow her. As they left, Fujimoto came to his work, and his manager told him about Sakurai and Morioka being together. As she was running away, Sakurai tried to stop her, but as she came across the signal, she shouted at him that she didn't want to embarrass him and she didn't want him to think that she was a burden to him. He assured her that it was not how he felt about her certainly. She started to cry, and it started to rain at the same time. He put his jacket over her shoulder and head, then suggested she come over to his place and take a bath and have lunch since his place was close by. Here they were, standing at the doorway of his house, where the both of them kept wondering why they had agreed to come to his place so casually. Both of them started to panic now. They started to hurry back in, while Morioka was preparing to take a bath in his house. Meanwhile, Sakurai was selecting an oversized hoodie for her to wear. It was still raining outside, and Morioka was now inside Sakurai's house taking a bath. Morioka was finally done with her bath, and came out of his bathroom when she was finally done. Sakurai had already kept a pair of oversized hoodie and pants for her to wear while her clothes would be washed in the dryer. As she came out, she started to put on the clothes that were given to her by Sakurai. Meanwhile, Sakurai was preparing tea for the both of them, as he was wondering why she started to cry. He thought that she must have been feeling low for a long time to have started crying upon this small matter. He also wished Koiwai would have been there at this place, since he was better than him at comforting people when they are sad. He chuckled to himself thinking about Koiwai. He thought of cheering her up, and remembered how he used to cheer her up when Hayashi used to give up on their games. After a while, Morioka came to Hayashi and peeped from behind the wall, when he thought that maybe his clothes were too big for him. After she came out, his clothes weren't too big, but looked very cute on her. He looked happy to see her. Actually, she wanted to ask him about washing her clothes, as she didn't know where to do it. He told her that it would be better if he did it for her, but she didn't want him to do it, as that would be too embarrassing for her. She didn't want him to look at her clothes, so she insisted on doing it by herself. He then noticed that she wasn't wearing any slippers as well. She had forgotten to wear slippers too, so he showed her the slippers that were kept at his house. As he was about to go wash her clothes, she quickly hurried off to do it by herself. After that, she turned on the washing machine and made her way back to the room where Sakurai had prepared the tea for both of them and brought it. She was happy to have it, and Sakurai was blushing when he saw Morioka in his clothes looking so cute. He looked very adorable with the cute grin on his face, while admiring Morioka at the same time. He was sitting on the ground while analyzing what Morioka was up to. 
Then after pointing it out, he sat beside her, but Morioka thought that they were sitting at a park bench. It was odd for him to be sitting on the ground for Morioka, so she wanted him to sit on the sofa while she sat on the ground, since she thought that she was being a real pain in front of him. So while arguing awkwardly the both of them sat on the ground with their tea. He also wanted to sit in that angle so he could look at her properly. He thought it was a good idea of giving his clothes to her. Now as she looked around she was impressed with the apartment Sakurai was living in, as it was a very comfy place for him to be in. After a while, her eyes caught the attention of the gaming PC which was owned by Sakurai. She was really intrigued by this PC, so Sakurai thought of showing it to her. He had a very modern version of the PC. After she logged in onto the PC, she was really happy after she saw the real Lily. The view was amazing from this point of view. She asked him if she knew any of his online friends in real life, to which he said that he was actually not fond of sharing details of his personal life with people whom he had met online. He wanted to keep his online life and offline life completely different. Suddenly, her stomach growled once again, which meant that she was hungry once again. Sakurai laughed and then went to the kitchen to cook something for Morioka. While he was at the kitchen cooking, she was also there to help him out, so the both of them began cooking together. After that, he had finally prepared their meals. They were having spaghetti which looked really delicious. After she took a bite, she was already in love. She loved spaghetti. After they were done, she insisted on cleaning the table, but Sakurai didn't want to let her as she was the guest, but she insisted on at least cleaning the dishes. He finally agreed and the both of them were now cleaning the dishes. As they were washing dishes, she became emotional once again, as Sakurai was too kind to her and thought of her to be really pretty. He also told her that she was more precious and appreciated by people around her. Hearing all this made her tear up, since she had never thought that she would be so important to people in real life. After quitting her job, she understood that people are way nicer than she had thought. Sakurai then tried to wipe her tears with his shirt. While they were in that position, the washing machine notified them that the clothes were now dry. She then got ready to leave after putting on her clothes. She also thanked him for hosting her for so long. After that, he decided to walk her back to her home. While they were walking back, the rain had already stopped and the sky was clear. As she was about to leave, he stopped her and told her that he also wanted to be partners with her in real life, the same way Hayashi was Lily's partner and Yuki was Hearth. She agreed and they decided to talk more and get to know each other more. In the game too, they were behaving very friendly and happy. Finally, Morioka and Sakurai were going on a real date. Toiwai also showed up to their date to tease them about being together and going out as a couple. This was the beginning of their awkward love story with their awkward date. The both of them were so nervous around each other that they couldn't even move freely or talk properly. But finally for the first time, they held hands. 